rock and roll. What's up everybody, Nolan Rodman here. Rodman's TV, I got a very special guest today. This is Derek Benham. He is the creator of a ton of different brands. He has a huge portfolio of wine. It's actually really awesome to have you here. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. So just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you've done, and sort of the synopsis of your wine. Well, it has been quite a journey. Started uh, back in, in the day. I'm not even sure you were born back in the day. I was not born you back in the day. You were definitely not born yeah. back in the day. It's not something I, I care to admit. Yeah, I started uh, out of uh, uh, University of California at Berkeley, double majored in philosophy and, and lit with minor in history. So I have zero you know, background in, in wine. In 1982, started just selling wine for a small winery based out in Lodi, a kind of a crappy little place you know I'm just selling wine out of the trunk of my car I'd be so curious just to talk about what the wine scene was like in the 80s in California Dude. it was awesome <laughs> no, no. no I mean it was wild well the wine the wine scene was in the 80s was super wild west like no anything rules. would go no rules really generic I was selling varietals like Chenin Blanc and Ruby Cabernet you go into you go into a store like this and you know you have all these beautiful bottles of boutique wineries and things like that but back in the day it was jugs everywhere yeah. the owners wanted to sell the the business they didn't like it i actually talked them into throwing me the keys to the kingdom to sort of assemble the pieces and put together my own business which i had always wanted to do so i sold that business for them and then started kind of a virtual wine company, which means that I didn't have my own winery. I would use other wineries to make wine for me. Yeah. Believe it or not, everybody was just so traditional back then. Or You're, people like, look at this rogue vagabond trying to come to my totally. winery. Yeah, you I were mean, like, listen I, man, it's all good. I just want to press some grapes here. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're like, yeah, okay, I'll make you know this lot for you and everything like that. And out of that came this brand called Blackstone in the early 90s and it came on the heels of a huge red wine boom in this country based on, on a, a 60 minutes uh, segment called the French Paradox. So when were you born? 89. Okay, so it was, it was uh, 91 or 92 yeah. that, uh, and it came out. Well, I think I saw that one. <laughs> you saw that one in your, in your mama's <laughs> arms. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it fueled this boom and interest in red wine craft, not just generic varietals, but actual you know, cab and, and Pinot Noir and the story behind it. I call it the gentrification of, of the wine business. So we caught that wave. Yeah, this brand just like caught fire. I sold that brand. I started a, this other uh, business and, and I built a brand called Mark West that focused on Pinot Noir. My whole angle was to take one brand and focus it on one varietal, which was also kind of uh, disruptive in the business because most people are yeah, most like wineries, portfolios they would stuff. have like, you know, one winery would have 13 different yeah, types of yeah, wine. So I just, so, so Mark West was Pinot. Yeah, Mark West, I mean, iconic brand. It's Boku here at the store. Oh, is it still? Yeah, yeah, goes nuts. People love it. Uh, one of the best value Pinot still out there, I yeah. think. When you were developing that, were you like, okay, I'm going to go to France and I'm going to taste all these Pinots? Or you were like, no, I'm just going to make a Pinot and this is what's going to happen. And whatever <laughs> happens, it happens. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew what I wanted in terms of flavor profile. Yeah. And I knew where to get it, so I was grabbing fruit from up and down California, put together a, a Pinot Noir that actually truly tasted like a Pinot Noir, but always, you know, played above its weight. Oh man, this tastes like a $20, $30 Pinot Noir, and it's, yeah. it's 10 to $12. Was it hard to find the fruit, source it? It was terribly people? hard. It was the same thing yeah. with, with Merlot. When Merlot took off and, and Pinot took off, there wasn't a, enough supply uh, in California, so. Uh, you know, it's hard, a lot of people don't know that, Pinot's harder to grow. Yeah, it's a thin skinned grape. It's fussy, you know. Fussy. Um, the, the growers have figured it out. I got a lot of them to, to plant Pinot Noir for me. Oh, nice. And, and or to graft over yeah. Merlot oh, wow. to Pinot Noir. I gotta ask this. Before we start talking about the brands, it's actually really curious to me. It's like wine is one of the, and beer sort of, it's like the only thing that you don't have to put ingredients on. Actually, you do. I mean, for example, you know, when I say Russian River Valley Chardonnay, that is essentially signifying what's in that bottle. In order to call it a Chardonnay, it has to be at least 75% Chardonnay. To call it Russian River, it's got to be at least 85% from the Russian River Valley. Gotcha. Now, the other, the, the other components, if I have them in there, I don't have to call them out. Most people don't, bit. right? 
Most people don't. I mean, but some do. So curious. To yeah, it like. is. It is. It, it's it's odd, but there are rules and regs that are the you know if you call it you know any kind of varietal, whether it's something on the case, it's got to be a piece.